I ended my hike with big blisters, sore ankles and knees and quads. They were just, they, I knew that they, were, they existed now. And I, and going, I thought going down that was going to be so much better and so much easier. But we went down an incline that was probably about that steep at times. You know, so, and you're, so you're climbing down. I thought, oh, this is going to be going down. This is going to be much better. No, it doesn't get much better. You don't have good shoes, good foundation. It's still. Maybe if I had a time better. If I had that better foundation, real tight foundation, I could have made it to the peak. I could have made it to the summit. I could have made it to that place where there was, where, where that, that tower was, that old fire tower that was built in the 1900s. So how do we build a sure foundation for our lives? How do we take what we, what we learn in these kinds of experiences, in the storms of life, the difficulties of life, the hardships of life, steep inclines of life, the mountains that we have to face in life. How do we get there? Well, in verse 24, we get the, best, we get the answer. It's a really simple answer. He says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a sensible man who builds his house on the rock. So there's two things there, isn't there? The one who hears his words and then does what? Acts on them. So simple. But how often when our parents tell us something to do, and we don't listen. And we don't act on it. And we end up in trouble, right? Just ask my kids. One of the things that frustrates me more than anything is that when I tell them to do something, and they go, sure, I'll do it, and they don't act on it. It, 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 it makes me nutty. And if you want a sure foundation, if you want to be strong in life, if you want to be able to face the storms, the difficulties that we have in life, we need to take what God, what Jesus has taught us in, this, in these simple passages of Scripture, verse Chapter 5 and 6, the attitudes, the not being an actor, not being a hypocrite, not being an actor, not being true, not being following, following what Christ says, we, and, and these things, then we all we'll miss the mark. We won't have that strong foundation. So the first thing we must do is hear, hearing is a must. It's good to hear the truth, but, but what is important is, but what, what we do is it, what it is important. We, can, we need to hear the truth. We need to, to listen to the truth. We need to absorb what God wants us to learn. We need to hear His Word. We need to come and hear His preaching. We need to go and hear His teaching in the, in the Sunday school class or, or in a Bible study or in a fellowship. We need to take those times and be a part of those opportunities that the church places before us in order for us to be able to hear the truth and be able to understand what God would have us do in our lives. You want a sure foundation, you need to know, you need to have the knowledge. If you want to learn how to be an engineer, or to be a doctor, or to be a musician, or to be a teacher, or to be a, anything in life, you need to go and learn about what it is to be a teacher, to be an engineer, to be a doctor, or to be a nurse, or to be a lawyer, or to be whatever you want to be. You need to go and have the information. You need to hear what God has for you to hear. You need, you need to be, learn what the teacher has for you to hear, I should say. And you need to be able to, to, to absorb it. You need to study it. You need to, to, to uh, read about it. You need to, to, uh, to learn it. If you never do that, how are you going to be a doctor? How are you going to be a teacher? How are you going to be an engineer? How are you going to be a scientist or a research person or, or whatever it is that you're, that you're studying to be? How is it that you're going to be a man of God or a woman of God if you never hear the word of God, if you never study the word of God, if you never hear it being taught, if you never hear it being preached, if you never look and open the Bible yourself and look and see what, it, what it's all about? How do you learn if you don't hear? You see, hearing is not only in, in proclamation like you hear in, in the sermon this morning. Hearing is not only in singing of, of who God is. Here it is also taking time and opening God's word to yourself and looking at it and, and trying to understand what he's teaching us. That's here. That's what it's about. That's what we need to do in our lives in order for us to become men and women of God, in order for us to become followers and disciples of Jesus Christ. We need to hear his word. But the second important part of this is we need to take action in, in, in it too. So action is needed. Here it is must, but action is needed. Once we hear, we must act on it. It's not enough just to talk about the truth. And you know, I know some guy, I know a fellow that when I was younger, he was, I think he was a professional student. The guy went from one degree to the next degree to the next degree, always learning, always getting more education, always sitting in more classes, 
is doing all these wonderful things and learning all these wonderful facts, but what, what, is, what, what did he ever do with them? It's great to learn. It's great to study God's Word. It's great to hear it proclaimed. But at some point, action is needed. We need to act on it. We need to apply it. We need to make it a part of our lives. The reason that many people end up calling Christians hypocrites is because they hear the Word of God, they know the truth, they hear the, about all that God wants them to do, but they never act on it. That's what Jesus was talking about, the hypocrites, putting on the mask. Great actors, but never put it into their lives. Applying it to their lives. You and I need to take all that we continue to learn, all that we continue to take into our hearts and, and hear and talk, and, and we need to finally take it and apply it. You know, when I think about this trip that Alexander and I took, we planned for months about this trip. I think after Christmas, we started talking about the climb up Mount Vernon. And you know, it would be great if we talked about it, it would be great if we, if we bought all the gear, it would be great if we, we uh, planned the trip, it would be great if we did all these things, but it would be nothing and useless if we never took that first step to climb up that mountain. Now, I know my foundation wasn't great. I know that I needed, I should have planned better. I know I could have done, done that, but how would I ever learn that if I've never tried? Are you afraid of failure? Are you afraid of making mistakes? How will you ever know if you can do it if you can't ever take that step and do it? You know, often we're looking for teachers in some for Sunday school and things like that. For children's Sunday school, for adults Sunday school, and those kinds of things. How will you ever know if you can do it if you never take the opportunity to do it? You've learned it. You sat in Sunday school yourself. You've heard the messages proclaimed here and maybe other places. You've done all these things. But when are you going to take it? Now, it may not be that you, too, that you have struggles. It may be that you have to be, you get knocked down right to the foundation that you've been learning, but you need to take that step and move forward and try and to see what you can do. To sit in the class for all your life and never apply it, with, to apply what you learn is foolishness, isn't it? You know the, the TV show, Canada's Worst Candy Man? Anybody ever watch that show? You get, one of the most ridiculous shows I've ever watched. You watch these guys, they sit in their class, they learn how to do things, they learn about all these things, but they never apply it. They never take what they've learned. They, they just go about that. They sit down, they, they get the information, they get the truth about how to do a project, and then they're, they, they're sent off to go do the project. Now, they take, they don't take anything of what they've learned, they just start doing it themselves. I watched the show the other day, they are both, they were going to put in a bath or something like that, and they have to drill a hole through the floor and, to, and do this, and, and, and they're supposed to take out all the carpet and all this thing. The first thing this one guy does, he sets the bathtub down, he marks, marks on the carpet where the hole is, and then he starts taking, cutting. And now there's two, two hammers, or two uh, drill bit type hammer, uh, things that they have to cut through the floor. I would never do this, just so you know. Um, but they, this guy is supposed to pull the carpet off first, so he doesn't do that to start off, but he then puts the bathtub down, takes a whole bunch of blue chalk lines uh, stuff, and he marks the hole, and then he takes that away, and, and then he starts, and he doesn't want to wait for the right tool, he takes his jackhammer and starts with a jackhammer in this hole in the floor. And it's like, did you not, I mean, did the, the class maybe an hour earlier, he didn't listen to the truth, didn't shoot it, didn't apply it, he just started doing his own thing. Foolishness. We need to hear the truth, it's right. We need to learn, but then we need to take what we've learned and apply it to our lives so we can move forward. In James chapter 1, verse 19 through 25, we read this while hearing and reading the word of God. It says, my dearly, dearly beloved, my dearly loved brothers, understand this. Everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. For a man's anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourself of all moral filth, and evil, a foundation of sin, humbly receiving the, an implanted word, which you, which is able to save you the foundation of God. But be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man looking in his own, looking at his own face in a mirror. For he looks 
looks at himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. So in other words, he hears the truth, but immediately forgets what kind of, uh, what, what, it, what, it, what it really is about. But the one who looks intent, intently into the perfect law of freedom and, and perseveres in it, and is not, for, not forgetful here, but a one who does, does good works, this person will be blessed with what he does. So what we're talking about here is that we see this man, and he's, he's going and he's hearing the truth. He hears what God's word can do in his life. He hears what he must do to receive Christ into his heart. He knows that, that his life is, is empty without Christ. And he hears that he receives Christ. But then if he's the one who just, you know, he hears it and then he just sits down. And, all, and then basically he forgets it. But the other side of this is there's the one who hears the word. And he goes out and then he's ready to apply it. He's ready to say, Alexander, God loves you and, and he wants to make a difference in that person's life. Or he goes around and he sees someone else is struggling and he says, you know, I know that I can come alongside you. God has given me some a great blessing. Let me help you. Or he goes and he takes what he's heard and he realizes he needs to go to the widow and the orphan. He goes to the mustard seed church. Or he goes to the whole mission. Or he goes to the street and he goes and, 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 and sees someone in need and he actually goes out and does something. One is the hypocrite, who's just an actor, who looks the part, who looks like a Christian. The other is the one who actually is the Christian, who does the act upon the ministry. You see, in Scripture, we heard earlier that those who call, there's, there's going to be those who say unto you, Lord, Lord, and then Jesus is going to say, I can depart from never knew you. Didn't we prophesy in him? Didn't we do such and such in your name? So we need to be careful here that it's not just about the acts. It's about taking what you've heard and, and taking it up to the world around us. And sharing the love of Christ with all those who, who care. So we're not talking about, uh, about salvation by work, but rather works because of our faith in Jesus. We are at work in the world around us because of who he is in us. The person who never acts on the truth is just a religious person that has faith built on sand. The person who hears the truth and goes, and goes to action based on the truth of Jesus is building a life built on a solid rock and a sure foundation. It is taking on and strapping on the right set of shoes and sure boot, those good boots that aren't going to destroy your feet and hurt you and that and, uh, and going up climbing a huge mountain and getting to the summit. And that summit is where Christ wants you to be. Build the sure foundation. Hear His word. And get it. And take action on it. That's what the sermon on now is. Basically, it's what our 